What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Camera Exchange. So as you can see, I am holding on to a DSLR camera, which is awesome for quite a few reasons, but mainly because Nikon just released a new DSLR. It's the D780. And honestly, it's a really nice breath of fresh air to be able to, one, actually fit my hand on the camera and hold it securely without having to use a grip or anything else. And two, to be shooting a new DSLR. It's not a mirrorless camera, so it's something fresh and new that I feel like I'm really gonna enjoy again. So let's get out there and try it. So the first place I really wanna start with this camera is gonna be the overall fit and finish and also the ergonomics on it. And I gotta say, Nikon did a really good job. The camera looks a lot more modern than all their previous models have, and the ergonomics feel great. The camera is really nice to hold onto, and it's actually pretty light because it's coming in at just 1.85 pounds. So that's still under the two pound mark, and that's actually super close to a lot of your full frame mirrorless cameras that are on the market. Like the Sony a7R 4 is coming in at 1.4 pounds. So kind of have a, 0.4 pound difference, which is a huge thing because this is actually a fair amount bigger, but they still manage to keep the weight down. So I got to give them credit for that. It doesn't feel overbearing like most DSLRs do. It actually feels pretty well balanced. But as far as the overall fit and finish, the top looks really clean. They did a good job. They cleaned up the viewfinder area right up here. It's a lot more sloped in and actually has a cleaner look to it. So it does look a lot more modern. Same with the selector switch over here. So same styling or I guess usage, you still depress the little lock button and switch between all your different modes and then lock it in. Same with your drive selection down here, but the overall styling looks a lot cleaner and it honestly looks a little smaller because of the styling. So I got to give them credit. They did a good job on that. As far as this section of the camera, it all looks pretty similar. The LCD looks pretty much the same. Same with all your selections over here. You have your video, ISO, exposure compensation, on and off switch, and your shutter button. So they kind of kept all that the same, which is nice. You know, you got to keep a little bit of the similarities so it's not this big jump from model to model. Now, moving on to the back, you're going to see, once again, quite a bit of similarities. You have all your same buttons over here, over through the top, and all the way over through here. One thing I kind of would have liked to see, and while I'm not a big fan with it, I do feel it does have a place, is a little bit of a toggle switch or the little joystick as opposed to the D-pad. But overall, I don't mind D-pads and I feel like it works just as well. So it's not a huge, huge thing. Now, moving to the side over here, a big thing that I saw was dual UHS-2 slots. So whether you're doing video recording and that's where you're really gonna see that or doing sports shooting, but video recording, dual UHS-2 slots is very, very usable. And this camera also has some very powerful video recording functionality to it, which you'll find out a little bit later in the video. Now, moving over to all your little ports on the side right here, you do have all your pretty normal ports. So you do have a mic port, headphone, and you're still gonna have all your pretty typical ports, but one thing they did change was over to USB-C, which is a nice thing because it makes it a little more modern and a lot more universal with a lot of the stuff out that's out right now. And last thing I did want to go over was the battery on it. So there is not really big battery change on it. It is the ENEL 15B, which, you know, is nice and usable. If you're using any other Nikon full frame DSLR, you're going to see the same batteries in it. So that functionality is not going to change and you're still going to be able to use most of your batteries. So good job to Nikon for all that, but let's keep going. So now I want to talk about the image resolution and ISO capabilities on the Nikon D780. And I got to say, they're pretty impressive. So starting off with your sensor, you have a 24 megapixel full frame backside illuminated CMOS sensor, which is a really powerful thing to have because that backside illumination helps tremendously in easing up the processor for that low light capability. And it just makes everything run a lot smoother and appear a lot cleaner. But moving into your ISO capabilities, you do have an ISO capability of 100 to 51,000 ISO, which is a huge area to have. And it's honestly a really effective area because now you can utilize higher ISOs like 3200 and still keep it reasonably clean. But if you want to expand outside of that, you do also have all the way down to 50 ISO or you can expand up to 204,000. So 
All in all, with the native and expandable, you have a huge reach of ISO capabilities. So I gotta give it to Nikon. They put a lot of powerful stuff into this camera, but let's keep going. So now I want to go ahead and talk about the autofocus system on the Nikon D780. Well, actually, I guess autofocus systems because it actually has two. And depending on which way you're using this camera will greatly matter as far as what autofocus system it's going to use. So that starts us off. If you're using this back LCD or shooting through live view, you're going to have a 273 point phase detection autofocus system with eye detect. And it's actually the same one you're seeing in the Nikon Z6, which seems to work extremely well, whether it's for video or photo. Now, the difference lies is it changes over when you use this viewfinder up here or when you shoot optically. It only uses a 51 point autofocus system with 15 cross type, which is a huge difference between the two. And it feels like Nikon was really emphasizing use on this rear LCD. Whereas I feel like it's kind of conflicting because at least me myself, I've always used DSLRs through the viewfinder and I've kind of negated using this live view so to say but it feels like the opposite goes for this camera if you're shooting through live view you're getting a lot more than when you're shooting through viewfinder you seem to get a lot less so that also brings us to the fact that once again if you're shooting through live view you're getting 12 frames per second max and if you shoot through viewfinder you only get seven so once again they emphasized heavier use on this live view functionality than we were getting with the viewfinder functionality so it almost feels like it's a hybrid camera so to say it feels like it's a blend between utilizing mirrorless features and utilizing dslr features and you almost seem to get punished for using the viewfinder on this camera so i've actually found myself not using it very much and honestly opting in for this thing but let's keep going Hey guys, the video Vince to talk about some of the video features on the Nikon D780. I'm actually filming myself with the D780 as we speak since my A7 III did run out of batteries. But that gives us a good chance to test out the face detection on the camera. So starting out, Nikon did give you the ability to shoot up to 4K at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second, allowing you to get 144 megabits per second in those files. So that 4K footage is gonna look absolutely stunning and really, really clean. Nikon did allow you to get slow motion as well. They gave you the ability to shoot at 120 frames per second in full HD. So again, it's always fun to shoot in the slow motion footage and I really like to see that Nikon put that in the camera as well. So let's talk about the ports. Nikon did give the D780 full size 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and microphone jack, which is always nice to see since you don't have to bring any adapters with you. Nikon also did give it the USB type C to do any external charging. And they also gave you a mini HDMI to do external recording. So when talking about external recording, you're getting really close to what Nikon gave the Z6. You are able to record up to 10 bit and they're giving you N-Log and Hyper-Log Gamma picture profiles. So if you're in any high contrast scenario, those picture profiles are gonna help out tremendously. So I do believe that the Nikon D780 is a great, great, great option if you don't wanna go mirrorless, but you're still looking for a hybrid camera when it comes to video recording. All right, so that's gonna wrap up our hands-on review on the Nikon D780. And I gotta say, the camera was really fun to shoot today. It performed really well. It was just a little odd. It stepped kind of too far, at least for me, outside of the bounds of a DSLR. I felt like I was using a mirrorless or a smaller camera that utilized more so that live view than it did the viewfinder functionality, but I get why they did it. They're taking the technology from their mirrorless lineup that utilizes you know, mainly just live view screening, even in the viewfinder, and putting it into a DSLR. That way the performance matches up. So I understand that and I get it. I just felt like it was really odd to see. 
but I do have to give them credit for putting out a DSLR when it feels like mirrorless is on the rise because that shows that they're still supporting any Nikon F-mount lens users and still supporting DSLR shooters as a whole. And they're not just putting all their priorities toward mirrorless. So I definitely got to give Nikon credit for that. And it was a very brave move, but that's going to wrap up our hands on view on the Nikon D780. Also, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Show us some love there. And if you liked what we did in the video today, leave us a comment down below or subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys next time. Oh,